I'm Matt, founder and CEO of Live School, and this is the Live School Podcast. Our guest today is Monica Wilhelm, principal at Fort Smith Elementary, and that's down in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Uh, Monica, I actually visited Fort Smith uh, back in 2017. I had a great time. Um, I actually had a picture on my phone here. I don't know if you can see that. And I do. Is that the Darby counselor? Yep. Yep. That's Cherry Byford. Do you all work together? No, but I do know her because our kids filter in. A lot of our kids go to Darby when they leave us here. At oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, and I have to say, you all have a great Mexican place downtown. Uh, I forget the name of it. It was delicious. We have quite a few good ones. So okay. <laughs> it's kind of nice. Uh, well, thanks for joining us today on the podcast. Uh, let's start by giving listeners just some of the awesome, fun stuff that your students are earning through your programs. I know your teachers have gotten really creative with classroom rewards that are either low cost or totally free. Uh, could you share just some of the ones that are most popular with students? So our teachers, you know, they, they try to keep their um, treasure boxes going but you know eventually it kind of gets to where the cost kind of starts to add up so some of the favorite for our kids is um they get to purchase lunch and not only can they purchase lunch with their teacher but they can also purchase it to eat with whoever they want so kind of a funny story with that um my son actually goes to my school and so it was Two years ago, when they started implementing that one, he actually spent 100 points so he could eat lunch with me. So I thought that was kind of funny that my own kid bought a coupon to come eat lunch with his mom. So I kind of treasured that moment. Um, Also, um, one of the a couple of my teachers, what they also do, even if they do purchase things, they kind of poll their kids to see what they're kind of interested in. And so like one of my teachers realized that her kids were interested in Pokemon cards and not just the little ones, but the big ones. So she bought some big ones and she, you know, made them worth a lot, little bit more points, but she saw an increase because boy, those kids were sure trying to earn those points because those were the big Pokemon cards. <laughs> so one of the things that my teachers really realize with the points is, you know, also serving your kids and getting to know what what they're interested in because they're not always what we think they want. And so I, the teachers that have the greatest bang for their buck really have prizes that the, the kids want. And so, you know, lunch with teachers, free time in the classroom, wear a hat, you know, things like that. That's awesome. Yeah, it's funny that sometimes what students want, it might not be the big expensive item. It might be like a really neat experience with their classmates or their teacher. Right. Um, I know there's some debate out there on whether the negative behavior should take away from students in terms of the different rewards that they can earn. Um, And I know your school has had some experiences with this. Uh, What's your opinion on what works best and, and what your team has found? Okay, so the first year we implemented live school, we did the where the red points came out of the green points. And we started looking at that and we started looking at kids that were coming through the office and the kids that were struggling. Well, at nine o'clock when you're in the hole already, you know, it's kind of hard for a kid to be motivated and pull out of it. So the next year, my counselor did some research and kind of talked to um, the people at live school to get some ideas. And one of the things that um, she came up with, with having that conversation about the green versus the red points is... Um, we keep our green points so the kids can still have a red point to show parents, you know, hey, we we made a mistake here. Here's what they've done. But it doesn't subtract from the green points. So if a kid has 100 green points and today they happen to get five red points, they're still going to keep their their 100 green points. So we saw that as a a huge success, a huge win for our school because The kids don't want the red points. They don't want those, you know, messages going to the parents, but they also still feel successful because they're not watching their green points disappear. So it's been a real win-win for our building because then we can just have conversations with the kids that have red marks and the teachers can have those conversations with parents, but then the kids also don't feel so deflated because they're losing their green points. So they still have their points. So And another thing that our teachers have learned to do is use it in a way like if, say, they need a their Tuesday folder to come back 
instead of taking a red point for not bringing their Tuesday folder, they give them a green point for bringing them. Mm. So we're really using our red points for, you know, things that are, that need to be shared with parents, not for little itty bitty things. So I think that has really helped. We try to really emphasize the green so that when we do have to use a red, the kids realize, oh, it's something I really need to reflect on. That's so neat. And so I guess for the student who maybe doesn't bring their binder, they see all their classmates getting that green point. And that's kind of reminder enough for them instead of feeling like they got penalized. Right. Because, you know, it could be that they were running late that morning, maybe mom you know, work third shift and getting, didn't get to sign it. So they're not being penalized for something. We don't know the reason why they might, it's not that they maybe just didn't want to bring it, but there could be a home situation. So they're not being penalized, but here's a little positive. If you did happen to bring it back today. So we see a lot more success in that than penalizing kids for things that might be out of their control. If you had a time machine and you could go back a few years, is there anything you'd want to do differently with kind of rolling out your positive behavior program? Uh, We definitely would have redid that one our first year when we were taking those red points out. I think, um, you know, having uh, more conversation with our teachers, I think now we have enough who've done it that it's easier for teams to implement when they have their team meetings like, hey, team, this is how we use them. You know, I think that first year we weren't really sure what it was going to look like and how we were, it was going to affect our kids. So we were just kind of like, you know, that saying we're building the plane as we fly it. Oh, yeah. I kind of <laughs> felt like that's what we were doing with live school the first year. It's like and we were like recreating our rubric and, and you know, and so really um, the, I think the important thing is probably creating that committee that can kind of look at what are our focuses for our building and then creating that rubric based on it and those expectations. Um, I think one of the things too, that would be important is, um, you know, having some teachers on the committee that are, have great classroom management, but also maybe having one or two that are kind of, "Mm, do you think that's going to work so that they kind of give that opposite side. So when you're reflecting on how it can be used, you kind of see all sides of it. Because I think, you know, at first we always want to be kind of Pollyanna and everything is going to be wonderful about it. But you also need that person who's going to say, you know, hey, what happens when this happens? This happens because, you know, and we had to have some conversation to um, rolling out, like, what are the expectations? How do you expect it to be implemented? Because you had teachers who maybe only gave one point for the day where you had other teachers who might give 50 points. So I would say really rolling out, if we could go back, really rolling out, like what did the school expect from it? Like, what did we want our rubric to be? What are the expectations for giving, you know, for kids earning a green point? What are some of the expectations for the consequence of a red point? And having, you know, maybe it's kind of a school wide, here's the major, you know, these are the tights with live school. Here's some freedom in your classroom. But I think that would have been where we would have stepped back is having some of those tights. Like this is what we expect from it. We kind of give teachers freedom. You know what I'm saying? Of course. And I love the point about actually having someone on your committee who is maybe more the poke holes person. You want to find that balance. If everyone on the committee is only seeing the, well, the challenges or why it won't work, you're not going to have enough, you know, momentum. But if everyone's positive, <laughs> maybe there's something you're not thinking of. Has that is that an experience you've you've kind of had as you've learned and iterated and, and grown uh, the program? Have there been people who have poked you know poked holes and it's actually helped figure out an issue? There has. We we did have some teachers because you know it made us go back and have to have those reflective talks. You know, like you know. For example, like I said, the teacher who gave for everything. And so we had to have those conversations of, you know, are kids really growing when you're just giving them a point for every single thing when they're not really having to earn them? It's like, oh, I know if I sit down, you know, so it really kind of grew that conversation for teachers to have that conversation of, you know, this is supposed to help us grow to get better. We're not just handing it out because 
kind of like free candy, you know? And yeah. so it, it, it kind of helped to engage that conversation of how we're using it to really um, up our, our students' procedures and classroom management versus, you know, like, hey, you know, like one teacher, she gives it if a t- kid really has a reflective answer or really justifies their answer, where another teacher, you know, it's just, oh, if a kid answered, I'm, you know, I'm giving them points. Well, of course, then everybody's like, oh, my answer is going to be this. So was it really guiding to have good discussion and good answers? Or was it to the point that that teacher is just getting their kids to want to verbalize just to say anything? Yeah. So, and I think, too, it also helps with teams to have good collaboration and to be able to talk about ways to help grow their kids. So we have seen over the last couple of years that we've used it that teachers are starting to um, kind of um, have those conversations. Like, again, this year we have so many new teachers. We're, we're kind of kind of starting some conversations again on the usage because, you know, we've implemented a lot of new people this year who haven't used it before. So, you know, when you get a lot of new teachers, it allows for conversation again and and a new um, vision because they might bring something to the plate that we haven't thought of right here on campus. So that's where we're kind of at again this year. We still use it but we're getting some new insight because we have a lot of new staff and trying to get them used to how to use it also. It's great. I I think it really shows to everyone how it's always a work in progress and it's never done. You know, you're always incorporating new people and and trying new things. Right. Um, Speaking of which, I know that you all adopt the Capturing Kids Hearts uh, curriculum. And I'm not sure if you've attempted to incorporate that into your point system or not, but just curious if you could tell us kind of what that's all about and how you've been thinking about the different initiatives. Well, so with Capturing Kids Heart, they have a word of the month. Um, So like one month was empathy. We're on a gradual, (laughs) gradual travel to get to where we are actually using those words of the month kind of in our rubrics. Um, so that is something that, um, my behavioral committee, we just finished the first nine weeks. We're wanting to come back together and kind of meet and see, um, what we can do to kind of align it because with capturing kids hearts, they also have like a social contract and things like that. So we're trying to tie it more in. And like I said, you know, like you said, it is a work in progress. We're constantly reflecting and tweaking. And that's the thing that we love about the rubric for live school is it's it's not set in stone. So you can revamp and, you know, tweak it along the way that best meets your building and your classrooms. You've mentioned your committee a couple of times. I'm, I'm glad it's not just you figuring all this out. Yeah. Um <laughs> Who are some of the the roles? Uh, how big is that committee, and and how does it kind of work together? And um, so my assistant principals on it. We have a couple of classroom teachers um, from upper and lower. We also have which we call them our amp teachers, which is our art, music, media, and PE. So we have uh, our media on it. So we have some different people from different you know, aspects of our building. So it's not just classroom teachers. It's not just admin. So it kind of, and they are kind of our fillers that go out and can get feedback. So um, I have a new AP this year. So she is um, kind of putting together this committee. And so we're, you know, going to pull it back in now that we've finished our first nine weeks and relook at, you know, our red points, our green points and, Um, and how we can tie that all together. Also, we do monthly um, capturing kids' heart huddles with our person there. And so we also try to incorporate her some with giving us some feedback of, you know, how could we utilize that with capturing kids' hearts. So it's always nice to be able to have, you know, feedback from, you know, others. And then also, you know, um, we, we keep trying to we keep track of sending those forms home so our parents can sign up and um, look. And I, and I would say that's kind of nice. And, you know, also being able to go into the setting and see if parents are actually getting on and looking at their um, child's um, points. Now, I look like I never look at it, but I look at it from the principal standpoint so I can see his from there. So I was- so it doesn't look like I ever look at his, but I really do. But it is kind of nice. And 
again, because we're at the end of nine weeks, we're going to go back through and um, send notes home to the parents so that they can um, look at it. And I know we get some positive feedback from them too, which we can take to our committee where parents are like that they can go on there and see. And they like that part where, you know, comments can be added so that they know why, hey, this is why they got a green pointer. Oh, this is why we got a red point. So we use that feedback too that we get from parents. Great. Well, I've got maybe a big picture uh, question as we uh, head towards wrapping up. If you could put a billboard that every principal in the whole country would see every morning on their drive to work, uh, is there a message that you've learned about how to reach kids that you would want to share with other principals? Well, first of all, we know it's relationships. I think the big overlying umbrella is those relationship pieces and building those relationships because I, when those kids participate in that live school and they know you care, the red isn't going to upset them as much. They know it's a reflective piece to grow. So if I had anything to say that you can't implement this until you really have those relationships. So relationships to me is that key piece to making this successful. That is that is an awesome uh, point to end on. Uh, thank you, Monica, so much. Really appreciate you sharing your experience and, and all of your thoughts. Uh, it's really fun part in my day to hear what you've been up to. Um, if a listener had like a question or wanted to follow up with you on anything, is there a good way to get in touch with you? I would say the best way is probably to email me. Um, my email is mwilhelm, M-W-I-L-H-E-L-M at Fort Smith Schools. Be sure the S goes on the end of schools.org. Fantastic. Well, Monica, thank you so much and hope you keep on doing what you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate it.